Hi folks, Six Slices here. Now, I've always rather liked the Edric pattern and I've I've had a few over the years. Um, I have a family connection with the um, Napier and Etric um, side of things. So when I was watching something on Instagram the other day, I saw that um, uh, Ashley Harrison of Arthur Wright & Co. Which is an Arthur Wright & Co here, this one. Um, was making some Etrix, or he's making, he was making a whole series of patterns in bog oak because he picked up a bit of bog oak from somebody in uh, Wales, I believe, sent him a piece of it. So he was making some knives for them out of that bog oak and then he was using some of the, the rest for other patterns. So I asked if any of those were, were available or who was going to be retailing them and he said, well, these were for a private order, but... Um, he then said to me that uh, uh, Jane at the famous Sheffield, Sheffield shop was going to have some Etrix in bog oak because he'd just sent a batch or was sending a batch to her and it would be with her on the Thursday before Christmas. Well, I was busy on the Thursday, but on the Friday I gave her a ring just to see what she had and I picked up a couple of um, other lamb's foots that you will probably have already seen by the time you've seen this. But... She, I asked her about the uh, bog oak etric, etrix, and this one here uh, came up. So she sent that out to me, and I got that just um, between Christmas and New Year. Now, just take these out of the way because they're all basically the same pattern. Oh, I should have said before I take these out of the way. Well, let's be fair to all the people that made these knives. Um, two of them. Here were made by Michael May, first two. This one is by Stephen Cocker, which has the, just the best, I don't know where he gets it from, but he always gets the best um, stag. I mean, this bit from um, Michael May is, is very nice, but this is from, uh, from um, Stephen Cocker is amazing. I don't know. I don't know where he gets from. Arthur Wright stag tends to be a little bit more bland. Um, just that's generally the case. But a bit of bog oak. Now bog oak, as many of you will probably know, is um, it's not cut from a live tree or even a tree that's recently died. It comes from a tree that died maybe hundreds, possibly even thousands of years ago. But was preserved by being buried in um, a bog, and um, the acid in the bog has, and, and a way of, a way of stopping organic materials from breaking down. So you, you know you, they found bog men and bog creatures, but bog oak is a, is one thing. Now, f back many years ago, th more than thirty years ago, a friend of mine did a um, did a PhD on bog oak. And uh, what he was doing was digging up bog oak and then he was um, carbon dating it to find out how, just how old it was, i.e. when those trees died. And then he would use, um, uh, he would look at the rings in the trees and determine what the weather was like. Because as you may or may not know, every time we talk about climate change, uh, the records that exist when you go back about 106 to 170 years. So when you say it's the coldest winter on weather or it's on record, or it's the warmest summer on record, they mean in the last century and a half and not over the sort of last millennia or two, because um, there just aren't any records. So what he was trying to do was create a record. Interestingly, his conclusion at the time was that the, um, I mean, it's oversimplified, but it was that over the longest, longer, longer term, till 400 years plus, um, changes in weather were perhaps within norms. Now, I know he's changed his view on that substantially in the period since, but uh, when he submitted that PhD, it was rejected by the University of East Anglia because um, they were suppressing anything and didn't come out with the, with the, the right answer. Um, so I, I, that was interesting. When that came out as a bit of a scandal, kind of some of us pressed him to resubmit his PhD, but he said that was all in the past. And I suspect that's because um, climate change has become a little bit more of a 
contentious issue uh, or a more of a reality, let's say, than it perhaps was then. But anyway, that's what this, the covers on this are, is bo a bog oak, um, which is ancient wood. Um, it's quite a good wood because it polishes up quite nicely. So this is the Ettrick pattern. I've spoken many times before about the Ettrick name. Now, what I don't know really is where the Ettrick, uh, why the Ettrick knife is called the Ettrick knife. What, what the, the background to it, I know where Ettrick is. I know about Lord Ettrick. I know about the Ettrick Shepherd and various things like that. But what I do know a little bit more about is the Warncliffe. Now, um, the Warncliffe blade was developed by um, a Lord Warncliffe. That's where he got his, where, where it gets the name from. But um, his name was actually James Archibald Stuart Wortley, MP. And he lived from 1805 to 1881. He, was, he later became first Baron Warncliffe, but he was very much related with the Joseph Rogers Company because he introduced... Um, Joseph Rogers to the Prince Regent in 1821. Rogers then collected their um, royal warrant in 1882, and that, there's clearly a connection there. And um, Wortley, uh, Stuart Wortley, the MP, became uh, Baron Warncliffe. So, um, you know, this is, this is all to do with royal patronage and so forth, I think. But anyway, he apparently came up with this blade in, in conjunction with his gamekeeper. So I suspect his gamekeeper probably designed it. But um, the 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 young MP took it to uh, Joseph Rogers and said, "This this is what we want. We want to make this little blade for preparing small game." So this is the sort of blade you might use if you were preparing squirrels, pigeons, perhaps as, uh, something as big as a rabbit. Um, it's not obviously, you're not going to address a deer with it, but this is, you know, because this is a, a sort of a small blade. It's not a, um, you know, a great hunting knife, but it's a, uh, a little triton, triton game knife. Uh, in terms of its actual blade length and, and knife length and so on. We're talking about a um, a full blade length of two and a quarter, but a cutting edge of just 1.75 inches or one, one and three, one and seven eighths inches. Overall length of the, the knife just comes in at just over six inches. So I actually quite like these, particularly in the UK because um, blade length is an issue, but with this blade length, you're never going to have a problem. But if you've got big hands like me, the idea of a knife with a small blade like that um, can be a little limiting. But the air trick has a blade, that a handle that's much longer than the blade. Now, people would say that's inefficient and so forth, but it actually means you've got a knife that's big enough that you can use without it having a huge blade on it. I mean, other companies have, have tried to achieve similar aims most famously probably um spyderco the spyderco dragonfly you might not think is a, a desperately keen competitor with the uh with the warncliffe with the etric rather but you have a similar length of blade edge and a similar length of of long handle you know, so much longer than the blade, it's almost twice the length of the blade or the cutting edge of the blade. Um, here you're doing it with this, with the finger choil to extend the handle forward. And here, with the Ettrick, you're simply extending the handle backward. But it's it creates a similar, it's a similar way of doing a similar thing, or sorry, a different way of doing a similar thing to give you a full hand grip. Um, the Ettrick is particularly good for uh, sort of draw cutting it's because the sway back design fits in your hand nicely so if you're pairing carving um, gutting um, small animals anyway it's a it's a great little size and as a, an everyday day-to-day -day EDC knife um, it's quite good for sort of opening parcels and uh, opening envelopes and, and the likes of of that 
Um, it works as an apple cutting knife, but it's a little bit on the short side. I prefer lamb's foot for that. But anyway, this is the um, Arthur Wright, Ashley Harrison made uh, Ettrick with a Warncliffe blade in bog oak. And I say I picked these up from the famous Sheffield shop. And for the avoidance of doubt, I have no connection with the famous Sheffield shop other than I like talking to Jane on the phone. I've never met, I never met her, but um, on the phone, she sounds absolutely lovely. So, um, I hardly recommend them as a company to deal with, and Jane in particular. And uh, this is a lovely little knife, which will add to my Arthur Wright collection, which is growing and growing and growing and outgrowing the um, space in which I have to keep it, which is, um, um, an interesting problem that I've got to uh, resolve. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this. If you like the stuff, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of it, then subscribe and remember to ring the bell. Thank you very much. Bye.